Yes. Aloha, everyone. It's wonderful to have you all join us again today. And yes, I am in yet another new environment. I decided I didn't want to risk the instability of the internet and electricity. So kindly, our Carnegie uh, Public Library, uh, we have a conference room here, and that's where we're uh, coming to you live. So originally, the... Um, memo that I sent out about Get Lit was, well, we'll know in the moment what we're going to talk about. And for those of you that have visited us often, you know that Rebecca and I just kind of, you know, we, we ask ourselves what's in our heart and we, we take off from there. Well, about two hours before the show, we got uh, more confirmed and clarity that we uh, seriously want to talk about education. And part of this inspiration was uh, Rebecca recently posted an opinion article, a very well thought out presentation that she put on Facebook. And as a result, uh, a conversation started with some of our viewers and the guest that I'm gonna introduce to you who's sitting beside me right now. And the conversation was really rich and we um, realized the value of it and quickly put together this show. And so we're going to talk about this particular article. But I'm going to take a moment right now to introduce, this is Eric Schooneman who's sitting beside me. He is uh, from Eureka Springs. And I'm going to let Eric just share briefly with you uh, who he is. And uh, then we're going to go back to Rebecca. And she's going to kind of bring out the highlights of uh, the article. In the meantime, I am going to play a little bit on the computer, Eric, while you you're still on here because I have to get our chat room up. All right. So go right ahead. I'm just going to. Well, hello. I'm Eric Schooneman. I'm a uh, local metal artist and uh, active in the community. I spent about six years in local government, uh, two, year, two terms on the planning commission, and then a single term on the city council. And with my engineering I, background, my engineering uh, degree, I was... I was studying the law as an engineer as opposed to being a trained lawyer or some other establishment trained individual following leadership instead of the words. Um, I discovered that the law is completely stacked in the people's favor. It's just that we've allowed corporations to determine our schooling and education and so that we're simply conditioned unconsciously to follow leadership. And that's what the Prussian school is all about. That's what Standard Oil Corporation brought into the United States in 1902 when they established the General Education Board through the US government. Um, you could find out more information about that coup in um, the underground history of American education by John Gatto, a really outstanding book. Um, anyway, that's a little bit about me and I'll uh, send it back to Becca here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Eric, we're okay. so so happy to have you here with your freaky wealth of knowledge. It's always so impressive to me, the stuff that comes out of your mouth that kind of cogitates in your brain. And I go, oh my God, like that would have taken me 10 years to find it. I've just got Eric here to like download it for me. So really appreciate you being here um, and seeing that lovely face from Eureka that I love so much. So here's the deal. I wrote that article um, called uh, Why Our Educational System is Failing. I wrote it a year ago, and I went to look for it again because I, I've been in kind of this vortex of really jumping off the cliff because I've just, I've had enough with trying to make it work the way it's been with my daughter who just turned nine this summer and just started fourth grade. Um, so 
I can speak to a couple of highlights, but I would rather have maybe both of you speak to a couple of highlights when I'm, when I, when I'm done speaking to it. Mm. So that article is written, and this is how I write. I, I have these things move through me unbeknownst to me for a really long time, and then I'll just puke it out on paper. And, and I think I wrote that entire thing in 40 minutes and went back and, like, you know, edited a couple of pieces and put it up. And it stirred up a conversation last year on Facebook that lasted about five days with tons of commentary and three or four shares. And, and they were from people that never communicate with me on Facebook. They're like Facebook acquaintances. They're just part of my population. Mm -hmm. So I have been trying to put stuff together for the, my new website and some other stuff that I'm working on, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I finally found it in my thread, like, back a year and reposted it for myself, not thinking anybody would look at it. But it's one of those really timely things right now where I think, and it could be the case of seeing red in terms of like, oh, red is my new favorite color, so I see red everywhere. You know, something of interest to you, then you notice it everywhere. Oh, I'm thinking of buying this sort of, you know, new car, and then you see that new car everywhere on the road. So, but what I'm sensing is that, and it could be that, that just it's something of interest to me now, so things are popping up everywhere. Or it could be really that we're, we are as a population in our evolutionary leap experiencing the veils being lifted around education too. And they've been lifting for me for a really long time, which is now why I'm kind of jumping off the cliff and going, no more, I can't do it. I can't put my daughter in that system and do what I do and know what I know. But it could also, but I think that a lot of people are experiencing this dissatisfaction and this um, disclosure that we can't really hide this system, we can't fake our way from this it, through this system anymore. We can't make excuses for it anymore. And I think a lot of people are also waking up around our um, industrial model of education. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote this article, it came off of the heels of my experience as a professional consultant in education. So I go into classrooms and I recreate curriculum based on empathy, leadership, constructivist models of teaching small groups working together, and I take the common core, which has been shoved down teachers' throats by the government, and I'm teaching them how to teach it in a way that's um, a new paradigm, and they're incredibly grateful, and they gain great tools from it, but what I speak to in this article is um, why the common core is failing, and why it's not hitting the mark, and what's going on bureaucratically, governmentally, that's keeping us underneath the rock that is the common core. When in essence, again, it's a good thing to a degree, but, but again, we're trapped in this, in this sort of like purgatory of not being lifted out of the enslavement of the old educational model. And it's, it's on purpose. It's purposeful. And I speak to this in this article also. So I think the highlights were pointing out four reasons why it's failing and then going into why government is, is, has this grand manipulation about mm -hmm dangling the carrot of freedom and autonomy through the common core, yet we're, it's really just embedding us more deeply in a system. They're just refining their own system and keeping us more deeply embedded. And I speak to that in terms of, um, you know, how they set the whole thing up in terms of education and being our savior and bringing us the common core and then abandoning us for health care. And that's where all the money is going. Um, okay, so Becca, so before we go into... Uh, that governmental influence, all right, Absolutely. But, which we're going to invite Eric to speak on. I really, um, I just want to go to that heartful perspective of what we're identifying for our children, which is calling this need to the forefront. Yes. Okay. And it's like, and I think uh, we've known it for a long time. We all knew it as students in an educational environment is that when our creative process is what really enthuses us, which energizes our interest in what we're going to move towards, what we want to learn about. That creative impulse has not been honored or received. Oh, I want to welcome our caller. I think that could be, uh, is that Jerry joining us or Tracy? It's Tracy. All right. Hi. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much Tracy, for joining us. So I'll finish what I'm saying, and I'm glad you just you just stay with us, Tracy, and um, sure. and then I'll make sure that uh, we have openings to get you in here as well. So um, I, I I wanted to just speak to you know our own personal experience of things that have turned us on in life and what we've loved and all the obstacles we've 
had in the educational environments. And now what we're seeing as adults is we're seeing even more and more of those freedoms have been taken away for our own children. And these other kinds of uh, enforcements have occurred, such as I know, Becky, you address, um, you know, the pressure of having to achieve, the pressure of the test. It's the focus is becoming on, you know, how good a number are you in that classroom? And we're very rapidly losing that nur nurturing environment to bring out the creativity, the spark. And of course, what does that lead to? A more enriched sense of freedom. So I just wanted to get that aspect in there as well. Yeah, I mean, just to briefly speak to that, my heart, if we speak to it from a heart place, is just been breaking. I mean, I've spoken to Blue a little bit and Tracy, and I've just been in this really heartbreaking vortex of trying to figure this out for myself and for my daughter. And I don't know if anybody's ever ready to homeschool. I don't know if anybody's ever ready to pull their kid out of school, but you get to the point where enough is enough because you see your children suffering and struggling so much. So to speak from the heart place and like we love them so much, therefore our heart breaks into action. Like it just gets to the point where it's intolerable. I think it's happening to a lot of people. And I want to acknowledge, this is um, Tracy Kenyon Ledib Lediber. I'm not sure if I pronounced your name correctly. It's Lediber. You got it. <laughs> okay. okay. And uh, Tracy's been one of our wonderful uh, listeners and viewers for quite some time now for Get Lit. And we also, she comes to the chat room, which that's a reminder to our viewers if you go to dearwoman.com and click on watch live, scroll down below the broadcast window, you can enter a chat room and contribute in the conversation in that way, or just chat as you please. And so um, Tracy uh, is also, she's also a parent uh, and her husband, Jerry. Um, so we have Rebecca, a parent, Tracy, and as well, Eric. So Tracy, would you like to would you like to jump in for a moment there? Well, you know, I I completely relate with where you are, Rebecca. I we have been through that and bumping up against the system. And well, I'll just say I'm a free spirit, and I don't like any system. <laughs> so I just, you know, we finally hit the wall and said, let's get out of the curriculum that was making my daughter so miserable. She was not inspired. She was fading out in a creative sense and um, so in the state of Florida here they have a virtual school system that you know we, I would love to be able to do all of it myself but it seemed like a really good middle ground to sort of keep us she could do to follow the curriculum and what the state is saying that she needs to have and you know the rest of the time was ours and we really got to let her you know, follow what she was interested in, and her creative writing has blown up. It, I'm so impressed, and it's just she's turned into a different person because she has a broader sense of what's available, mm -hmm. and, you know, I won't say it's perfect because, you know, there are still times when you know, she doesn't want to do it, and I feel bad pushing her into doing it because, well, honestly, the stuff that she's being asked to do is just ridiculous. It's, it's rudimentary. It's, I don't, you know, it's not really challenging her on any level. Mm -hmm. And there's no passion in it. And so she's uninspired still with that part of schooling. But the parts that we do on our own, she can explore all of her interests. And I call that just as valuable learning. And as a parent, I feel like, you know, it's really my job to prepare her for life. And what I want her to have is happy. And so, you know, I really think choice is everything. And I try to give her as much freedom as possible. But, you know, I, I can totally relate to where you are, Becca. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. It's hard. It's hard as a parent. Yeah. yeah I have a one-year-old son. Oh, I'm so glad that you spoke to that. And I think, Eric, you had something to say a little earlier because I saw you kind of go like this. So oh, you yeah. Wanted that, that moment's passed there. But... Um, I'm, what I'm hearing from both of you is what I'm hearing from everyone else, 
that's more conscious about their children, their own feelings and so on. Um, and, and that is, we are, um, our hands are tied with what we are calling the system here. And what I'm suggesting, or what I understand now is that this system is really had been designed by us. And we have allowed someone else to educate us within that system. Although the system we actually have right now is absolutely brilliant. It's just that we're not recognizing the brilliance of this system. And what this is, is the elected school board. This is what's so essential that we recognize, one, what an election is. These are the things that we have not learned because we've allowed corporations to regulate our schooling for over 100 years. You know, that was, like I said, 1902 is when Standard Oil Corporation created the government school system. And of course, they went to each township because each township determined its own school system. And they said, well, let us uh, fund your schooling. And that's what they said to the first generation. Let us just give you some funding to help you along in your education. Because we, as a, as a democracy, as a republic within a democracy, we, education has to come from the people up. And that is why we have an elected school board. This is essential for us maintaining our freedom and learning how we keep our own citizen government. Citizen government can't exist without citizens knowing how it works. So, of course, you never put a corporation in charge of schooling. This is why we're massively retarded to the lowest common denominator, common rotten to the core, no child left unretarded. This is what's going on. And here we are so late in the game, we're 100 years down the line, and nobody remembers what our original school system was about. Okay, it's a holistic school. We had Montessori Waldorf schooling for 100 years before it was ever discovered in Europe. This is what we were demonstrating already. And this is why we, like I said earlier, we kept President Wilson in check and the Congress after World War I in check because we knew the limitations of those offices and we could throw them out. In fact, we have the obligation to throw them out as citizens. Okay, but if we don't know this, we don't act. And we just sit, sit around under, oh, well, something needs to be done. What do we do? Of course, we don't know what to do. We don't even know what a republic is. We're not personally empowered. So what, what that's bringing us back to, and this is like, uh, it seems to be going across the board and all our major issues in the world mm -hmm. is that we need to learn law and we need to learn what the rules are. Absolutely. We need to understand if, if we're playing a game in our governments, then we need to know what the rules are. That's right. Samuel Adams, in fact, called it the animating contest of freedom. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll see if I can remember the whole quote. If you love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go home and leave us in peace. We ask not your counsels nor arms. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that ye were our countrymen. Okay. Um, so this basically explains it there. Either we participate, and believe me, we would be compelled to participate if we knew how easy it was. See, in metaphor, really simply, the current schooling that we've had, the standard oil Prussian school, European designed to keep people under repression, separate all the subjects, separate all the ages, teach everything in confusion, divide and conquer. Totally. It's all about competition, fear, test, 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 test. No more is it the cooperation which was our holistic schooling, you see, completely opposite. And if we're so drastically upside down schooled, and then the extended schooling class, the development point of the brain, so we're hardwired in separation. That's why we can't put anything together. So, uh, so what we're really talking about here is, I mean, we're talking about remedies and antidote to come back to genuine uh, creative education, which was always ours to begin with. So we're, right. we're, the loop is... Either we're creating these alternative solutions like homeschooling and um, private schools, mm -hmm. and or we're coming back to recognizing our rights as citizens and Thank how we can access that power within ourselves again. Thank you, dear woman, for bringing me back to the uh, topic at hand, which okay. is recognizing how perfect things are right now perfectly set up for the people. It's just that they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. The revolution's already happened. All we have to do is understand the law. The revolution's already happened and the hard part is done when we follow our law. We, the people, have the law. Okay. Okay. So what's important here is that simply we occupy the school board. Mm -hmm. How about that? Let's, let's apply the 99% rule. 
Mm -hmm. And 99% are, are following. Hey, they're trained, they're dog trained to follow. Don't try to wake them up because it's like opening the oven door and the cake falls. You can't, you gotta wait until they're, they're ready. They'll until start asking. Baked. They'll ask the right questions. They'll be like Becca right okay. now saying, hey, wait a minute. We, right. we recognize a problem. I'm just suggesting the solution is easy. Yeah. And all we have to do is occupy the school board and vote in our Montessori school. And all the kids go to the best school in the, in the country for free. We okay. don't have to have alternative schooling. Our original school system is the best of all of it right there. It's just we have to use it in our favor, not following some dictatorial top-down approach, which is absolutely contrary to our freedoms and liberties. Thank you. Okay, and no, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. And that's and that's especially why I wanted you to participate today. Okay, so we want to keep, let's keep presenting uh, each of these aspects. Rebecca, if, there you are. If cat coming up, I'll say a few things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So I think to bring this back, you know, there was a lot of points that you hit on, Eric, in terms of law, government, bureaucracy, the history of that, the foundation of that. Um, and I just want to make sure that we can flip that to a place where we reach all viewers, because I know that a lot of viewers are up on sovereignty and up on governmental, you know, reformation, transformation. But historically, you know, I love the piece you said about um, it's perfect as it is right now. It's exactly where it should be. And that our, educa our educational system has been one of the strongest. And it is so beautiful and perfect in its own way, and it has been. So when we look at education historically, and this speaks to what you're saying about Standard Oil putting in the first school system. But, I, you know, if we go back to the very first broadcast Blue and I ever did, when I speak of um, – conscious business practices and how evolution has brought us to a place of being these 21st century learners slash humans where we're having to incorporate so much more than just this industrial transactional model of communicating um, per, business, educating ourselves. So if we look at it in terms of philosophically or evolutionarily, when we started our educational system, we were a fairly new country. And we needed leadership in place. And we were also burgeoning on the industrial era. So we were teaching people to do what we needed them to do in an industrial model, which is separate people out, teach them according to age, get them to, um, get them to memorize and be task-oriented and follow through. And not that that was actually it – was, it was, that's a, da a dangerous trajectory, but it was what was needed at the time. Mm -hmm. What's happened over time is that we've needed to expand and catch up with our evolution and the needs of being highly empathic, culturally sensitive, multitasking um, the small detail while looking at the big picture. And Tracy spoke to this in terms of learning being a creative, multidimensional process. And that's where we're at. And we've been there, but we have needed that for a long time. So we, we had need for what it was, although, you know, you, I can argue that we might not have needed it at all, but it was needed for something. And for a long time, we've not needed that model. And we stepped evolutionarily into this other place of learning and growing. And, and yeah, it's so easy to walk in and say, take over the school board and take over this and take over that. But what's what really needs to happen with people is they have to understand on a philosophical level and a heart-centered level, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even if they don't understand anything about law, that they have to feel empowered in their own self to follow that intuitive thread that goes, that is no longer serving us. We need to go this way. Mm -hmm. And then that will empower people to go in because I don't want people to get lost on law and things like, and it is very simple, but I think our brains have been so entrained to be overwhelmed by that right. that we shut down. But, so if we look at it historically, we are in the most perfect place we could ever possibly be right at this very moment. Mm -hmm. Although it would have been nice to get there 20 years ago. But we're here now and people are waking up to it. And evolutionarily, our education system has to shift and it's got to catch up to it or else we're going to be, as I spoke to in the article, not even viable as an economic resource anymore. You know, there will be no leadership within the people we're bringing up. Well, uh, just, I'm just gonna bring in, there's a little bit of information in the chat room. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry uh, had said he had seen uh, some of these memes going around that I like uh, teaching children how to think, not what to think. Mm -hmm. 
And then Tracy, you're more than welcome to come and um, vocalize what you put in the chat room here about the trend, <clears throat> definite trend in searching out a better solution and agreeing with Becca that there should be more classes on intuition, more expansive learning. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, my perspective on this is they're so limited in what they're being taught that they can't get out into the world and, and, and make really educated choices and to suit themselves and not follow some trend or, or you know. So, yeah, I, I, I think that the curriculum could use a big makeover. And it's a whole different kind of approach that I'm not sure everybody's ready for. I'm kind of on the far end of that. But I think there's a trend. I've been noticing more and more people, parents, complaining about the school system, recognizing where it's, it's falling short for their children. They're having to battle their children to participate. And I don't see that it's really accomplishing a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and yeah, I'm fully aware that just about everything has been co-opted by the corporations and fully aware of that and, and their agendas and all of that. And, you know, I really try to just do my own thing and um, practice what I preach to my daughter, who kind of now looks at the sort of, it's just monotonous work that she's being given. And she looks at it and she's like, yeah, I know, I, I have to play that game because that's what the setup is. But she, you know, she, she knows the difference of that versus what do you want to know in the world? And let's go follow that and see, you know, what you can learn. Right on. That was really well said. Yep. Yeah. Most important. Thanks. It, the schooling should be empowering. The schooling that we had originally, that, and going back to what Becca had said earlier about the history, originally, long before the Industrial Revolution, it wasn't, uh, that, you know, we're going to talk about 100 years before the Industrial Revolution, we had established a school system in this United States, which was based in townships. And following the democratic model, we, as the population got so big, then we added another township. And each township determined its own schooling from an elected school board. And this all follows democratic principle, which is so essential to understand here in determining, is this system good? Or is what we're doing good or not? You know, we first look at the principle involved. If it's top down, well, systematically, we have a problem here because we have a republic, in which is about the people up. And if we don't understand that if we allow a top-down top -down school system, we're going to end up with a top-down government because the people will be educated to simply follow. And that's what uh, the problem that you mentioned. They're just being taught to do the endless paperwork and stuff, and it's not engaging. Well, that's what they want. They want you to be poor. They want you to be dull. They don't want you to put anything together. That's the perfect – oops. <laughs> Per, I'm pounding on the table. The perfect uh, corporate cog. Right. See, if people can't think, if they just follow leadership, and that's that's exactly what they want. And so we cannot allow school. That's why it's the First Amendment again. Yeah. Going back to that beginning, we put number one before even the Second Amendment. First Amendment is the freedom of education. Without the freedom of education, we won't even know what the rest of the amendments are about, much less the Constitution. The Bill of Rights was the corrections, our highly educated local school system and population. These people were so smart, they could read the Constitution, the draft Constitution, recognize the weak points, and then make corrections. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how brilliant we were 230 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, then 100 years after that, they had to wait 100 years after the revolutionaries had passed and forgotten this, we've become complacent. Then, you know, we had the Industrial Revolution and they were realizing, hey, these people are too smart. They're, they're, they can't work like slaves all day long. You know, they're, they're actually rising up. And, well, we got to put an end to that independent thought, you know. So what we have to do is create a, the, the European model. Let's bring that into the United States. Well, Standard Oil Corporation provide that funding. And they didn't apply it the first generation. They apply it the next generation. Okay, they said, well, we don't quite have enough funding, so we're going to have to consolidate. And they started herding the people into cities just like they did with Europe. In 1900, here's the here's statistic, 1900, 80% of the United States population lived on small independent rural farms, totally off the grid, totally organic, totally healthy. They took care of themselves, regulated their own citizen government, and so on, okay? Now, 100 years after that, year 2000, 80% now live in cities, mm -hmm. totally dependent on 
corporations for everything, including the thoughts in their head. Mm -hmm. What? No, I, did you finish that thought? Is that right? I, I can I can continue on. I I'm, know you I'm, can. I'm looking at what's most effective here. I'm just pointing out the things that Tracy yeah. and Becca have pointed out here. The the problems that the shortfallings. Hey, that was intentional, systematically we put in right. there. Right. And since uh, in metaphor, just to be really brief and summarize this whole trip, government schooling is teaching us basketball and football. And we learn really well. We could jump in there and know the game. We know all the rules and everything. We could. Okay, now they are sending us to a rugby match <laughs> while we're missing our favorite basketball game. We will only suspect that they are throwing the rules when we get a touchdown and oh, oh there's a penalty on a play. We lose our, you know, we lose our touchdown and oh, we're going to lose 20 yards on the play. And this goes back and forth. And all we can do is just raw and cheer and wave our flag when the cheerleaders are jumping up and down because that's all we know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course we're losing the game constantly and oh, we're going to lose our stadium now. <laughs> oh, but work harder. <laughs> <laughs> that's the American way, raw and cheer. <laughs> you know, let's have a pep rally. Uh, no. Okay, I'm out, and I'm going to I want to point out a brilliant turn of phrase you just used and point out two more very short things and then we can continue on. One is you said corporate hog. Mm -hmm. And I love that. That's a great turn of phrase and I'm it, you probably see it in some of my writing and I'll give you credit for it. Corporate cog. We are creating corporate cogs. Right. Uh -huh. The other thing I wanted to point out is that Eric's, but you know, I spoke to this idea of the industrial era and how we taught people and how that was created as something that was needed at the time, but it might not have been the best thing. Eric actually spoke to the darker side of that, is that we were creating a model to keep people suppressed and then train their brains to not think outside the box. So that really spoke to that darker side. Mm -hmm. A couple more things I want to just yeah. throw on the table is that um, th just a funny bit from you before is you said no child left retarded. Unretarded, no child left unretarded. No child left unretarded. So I have created a training called No Child Left on Their Behind. And I just had this really funny moment in my head of like, oh my God, what if I created a training that was called No Child Left Unretarded? I would be like fired <laughs> from everything that I've ever done. People would come at me and be like, oh my God, it just, I just had this grand image of like pitchforks and yeah, okay. steak. Like how could you? So you can say that about our children, so, but that is still true, is no child left on their behind. And then I also just want to point out, there's a book that Dr. Seuss wrote, actually he started creating it, and then he, he died before he finished it, hmm. called Diff and Doofer Day. And it is a brilliant book, so this man took it on, and in the back half of the book is all of Dr. Seuss' is, uh, rough drafts and illustrations, and the front half of the book is how this man finished it. And it's basically about this school that is different than all the rest and all the students are different than all the rest like mrs wobble teaches weaving mrs uh, snorty teaches sneezing and it's all this stuff about how we think differently and then all of a sudden the principal who's mr low who's got like these eyebrows that he can change positions to change his mood comes in and says we have to be tested there's a thousand questions and it's going to last a week and if you don't pass it you're going to be sent to not different do for school but the same blah 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 school and, and they're all in gray and they're all depressed and all the kids are walking with the same thing and, and the kids freak out and Mr. Lowe and all the teachers say don't worry about it you know how to think you don't need to know the answers to this because you know how to think mm -hmm. so they take the test and they pass with like one billion percent and they have this big party and they get to stay in different duper school and be creative mm -hmm. and do crazy things and so to any pay I just to lighten it a little bit and give you support from a really wonderful place, which is Dr. Seuss, mm -hmm. go get the book Diff and Do for it. even if you just keep it for yourself and don't read it to your children, because it, it's just, it'll, it'll create a, a, an arena of hope and light around your heart. So order that book. And I could give you a hundred more books to read on educational theory and things like this. Oh, we could add, add those references, uh, Becca, after the show, we'll add those references to the web yeah. page as well. <laughs> yeah, could you spell that for me, please? <laughs> I love Dr. Seuss, but I don't know that one. <laughs> it's called Diff and Dooper. And, and I think it's guy F F E N D O O F E R. Diff and Dooper. Diff and Dooper. Thanks. Um, I wanted to respond to something that Tracy shared, which um, when when you mentioned Tracy, that, you know, here you are in a dialogue with your daughter and you are sharing the consciousness and education that your daughter uh, is to understand that, yeah, this is just something you have to do. This is part of the program, part of the system. 
And yet, on the other hand, uh, this is something that, like, you know, when Eric mentioned, you know, uh, everything's perfect the way it is. Because look at the consciousness now that we're teaching. Now we are teaching value to our children because we're basically saying, uh, and I heard another educator share a story just the other day. We're now saying to the students, yeah, essentially, we know this is bullshit. However, uh, just like our, our government, our constitution right now is bullshit, but the consciousness that's happening is, but learn the rules, get knowledgeable, so you know how to play that game. And at the same time, here we are as parents and guardians, and we're now building our students and our children's confidence in recognizing that, yes, there is a controversial issue going on here. Yes, uh, this is not uh, being uh, distributed fairly. However, let's teach you the understanding of the overall system. And so it reminds me of the conversation we had three get lit ago when we were uh, referencing information out of Aldous Huxley's book about the Brave New World Revisited. And he was saying, propaganda can be a useful tool. But what we lost in the understanding of propaganda is that you have to teach the people to be able to discern this is propaganda and this is not. And this is actually irrational propaganda. But the consensus in our society is it's serving us because it's helping to organize a certain direction that the society, the citizens have consented upon. So in a way, our, yes, our kids are the guinea pigs, but with us being brilliant and conscious, we probably, I mean, we have a really good uh, environment to be teaching our children the inconsistencies and how to be empowered in them. I just want to say that I was typing you Aldous Huxley's um, propaganda you know, discernment while you, right before you said it. So I was right there. Uh, All right. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Tracy, were you going to share something? Oh, I just think you're brilliant. And I think <laughs> that was right on the money. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Totally agree. Uh -huh. Yeah. Cause I just love, you know, no matter what we're talking about now, I think this is what's changing in a lot of our information sharing is that we are sharing it now empowered because we are getting so knowledgeable. And the fact that we are teaching our children this is brilliant, just brilliant. See, that, that's really important to know as a republic, which is a citizen government, the definition of a republic is a government where the citizens have the supreme authority and are entitled to vote elected officers and representatives who are governing according to law. So once we understand that, there is the empowerment. As long as that particular flag is flying, that stands and symbolizes a republic. So that, that means, regardless of what we have been led to believe, that they have taken away our Constitution, that they have nullified the Bill of Rights, or have a, a homeland security that removes parts of the Constitution. Remember here, we are the authority, not they. But if we acquiesce and give that apparent leadership to these people who appear to be leaders, well, we, in our absolute authority in this moment, now are deferring to some external authority, which defines the dictatorship, some leadership, top-down thing. So in this moment, in our, in our citizen government, we have been trained to follow leadership, which follows the dictatorship model. So we end up with a dictatorship by default because we are not participating. So I'm explaining here, it is perfect. It's just that we have to wake up and recognize, oh my gosh, what can I do now? Mm -hmm. We have everything available right now. My gosh, I, I've said it all so many times. It all began to form and rhyme. We all heard it too many times. <laughs> okay. Impeachment for cause leaves no room to doubt. Those who serve not are swiftly called out. Without doubt, it's a route. And it's how we pull us out of this nasty spin we're in when we find it sick or swim. We throw out bad laws and that's in a hurry when we follow our conscience and trial by jury. A republic is a nation where the citizens rule, but you'll never learn that in a corporate public school. Okay, <laughs> really, really very simple stuff. Mm -hmm. And I love the, I love Dr. Seuss so much, you know, and so I put Dr. Seuss and Thomas Jefferson together. So I think my pen name will be Dr. Jefferson, maybe. <laughs> okay. That's great. 
So I could go on and on and on with more rhymes that way, but uh, I'll let I'll let others participate. You, know, you get a particular understanding of what I'm saying here. We have it right in the palm of our hands. Yeah. You know? But you know what also comes to me is that if here we are, we're educating our children on the discrepancies in their educational environments, right? So we're really, you know, for lack of a better term, we're uh, creating and empowering our personal uh, warriors because, you know, by the time they get into the eighth and ninth grade, I remember myself, I was confronting those teachers standing up in a class of 30 and going, how can you possibly say that? I mean, I was in school, you know, they couldn't do anything but have a conversation with me. All right. And it was like, I might've been the only student standing up and doing that. But you see, as we empower our kids, they're going to confront from the inside. Absolutely. I, I did the very same thing, too. My, I took it upon myself in first grade when I recognized the monstrosity. I'm, kindergarten, I mean, it was actually nursery school and preschool. Those were very cool. Kindergarten, I was getting very suspicious. Okay, first grade, I knew the gig was up. We were having to sit in rows now. There's somebody up there talking all day long, and we just have to sit here and listen. We can't talk to the people around. We can't draw them. I had a daily progress report because they were getting very uh, – <laughs> you know, anyway, uh, I realized there was a problem that my goal every day, I took it upon myself that every single student in the classroom had to laugh if they, just to, for a stress reliever here, because this was not, this is way un- right. unbelievable what they're bringing down the energy. And so if everybody didn't laugh, well, there had to be another attempt. And so that's basically what I was doing first and second. And then they put me in third grade. I had to be in remedial classes with all the rest for the next after my second grade teacher quit, yeah. actually. Yeah. But I, thank goodness we're all special needs. Yes. <laughs> quit because of you. You traumatized her. She quit because of you. Well, she, did, she didn't deserve to be a teacher, frankly. She was horrible. And uh, she was like a dictator. And I was like, no, no, this ain't going to happen. No way. And um, so they kept me in the, the remedial classes for six years, and then they, my dad was educating me in AC and DC electronics and homeschooling me at the same time. So right. when I got out of that, uh, out of, after six years remedial, they allowed me to take an algebra class two years after everyone else, and I had 104 average for the year. So they put me in the AP classes after that. I went from the retard classes to the advanced placement classes in one year. And then I graduated at the top of my class and went into... You know, I think this is a really great point because now you've said the word retarded on this show Mm -hmm. probably (laughs) three times. Mm -hmm. And I just want to point out that even Eric is like, I went from the retard class to the smart AP classes. And I think, again, you know, your mindset, and I'm challenging you here, Eric, is not exempt from, even with all of the freedoms you've, you know, created for yourself, this, you know, the language set, the belief around, and this, think about this for a minute. Here's Eric, Eric, who's spent a lifetime, he knew the jig was up in first grade, yet his language is still entrained in a way where retard class, and I hate using that term, I'm using it now because that's what was thrown out there, versus smart people classes. And that's what our children, take a moment and just step into the role, step into the body of our children right now and how you know gifted and talented programs are sending such a subversive actually not a subversive but obvious message about you're smart you're not separation that's right you're expelling you're not every kid is gifted. label it's exactly so, right on you got it you now, went on ahead the there tracy so yeah there's just the way we're in training our children to even have their own mm-hmm. self-modulating belief system, their own love for themselves is so fucked up. Remember, it, to, to solve this problem, oh, Tracy perhaps wants to speak first. I guess. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just, you know, um, I just wanted to throw out there just a concept that I've been tossing about based on my own experience of, and it's really just a question. Do we really need an organized system at all? Yeah. Or because I went, you know, I went to college. I really learned a lot because I took psychology because I wanted to learn about people. But after that, I learned so much just self-powering myself about the world, about everything, you know. And and my daughter saw that. She, she watched me do it. And she noticed 
she knows the difference between, you know, following, you know, your curiosity and learning. And I'm just wondering, can we get that in an organized system? Can, can we experience that? Well, I, I, that's a great question, and I think the answer is yes to some degree. I'm, I've been, Tracy, you know this, that I've been looking into alternative school for my daughter. And one thing most of you don't know is that my daughter just was enrolled this year in a Montessori charter, right? I was like, yes, this is going to be the best. It's Montessori, and it's this, and it's, so they follow the, you know, common core standards, but they do it Montessori style. And she's like, Mom, it's no different. We just have so much more work to do because of having to meet Montessori standards and Common Core standards, hmm. so the public school system standards. So they sit down every day on the floor. That's the only thing different. And they pound them with worksheet after worksheet after worksheet. And she's miserable. So you and I have had conversations about the unschooling method versus the homeschooling method versus um, the virtual learning online that's actually the public school model, but you just do it at home. And I, I look at that model at, like you have too and gone, well, it's a good bridge over to something that's more unschooling, but you're still having to teach the same stuff. And so I came across a school recently, and this, I think, is a diff and duper school where it's a very small uh, pr private academy, but it's, um, it's very constructivist, very liberal, and they have PE every day, art twice a week, music twice a week, Spanish twice a week. And they have um, two blocks of science for two hours a week, two blocks of math for two hours a week. And, and then the classroom, they basically, the teacher says, what are you interested in learning for the next few weeks? Figure it out, and I'll help guide you. But I walked in on the science class, and they, were, um, they wanted to study the human body. So they were studying reflexes, and, the, and all the students decided that together. And then they decided how they were going to conduct experiments on you know, testing reflexes and all these different ways. And these are fourth graders. And every classroom I went into, the teachers, I couldn't get them to shut up. They were so excited about what they teach and how they teach it. And the math teacher is a PhD who studied all over the world and all this stuff. And he, he just loves math. And he said, my specialty is working with traumatized children, math traumatized. Um, and they have these big blocks of time where they can, and they don't have a textbook for this stuff. They gather stuff as they need. They work the land um, and the per forest preserve behind their building twice a week also. And, and so there, I think there are schools like that. But again, it's, a, it's like a housing, it's like a container for children to come together and be safe and work together more than it is we have a formula and a curriculum and grades. So it's out there, but it's really, really rare. And it's also really expensive. So where is that, you know... Right. Education is our birth rate kind of thing. Can, can I just jump in because you just triggered a memory of, well, my mother was a teacher for many years, so is my husband Jerry's mother was also a teacher. And, you know, I remember back in the late 70s into the early 80s, she loved it. She was so passionate about, well, the freedom that she had to do exactly what you just described as the ideal. And over the years, you know, standardized testing, and it just obviously turned into a corporate environment where it wasn't about the kids anymore. And the stress this woman went through because of that and all the teachers around her, and, you know, it, it was horrible to witness. And I was so grateful when my mom finally retired just to get out of the mental environment that she had been sort of forced into because, you know, their jobs were threatened over such ridiculousness. Um, so basically all the teachers were teaching out in fear of losing their jobs. And my mom was not able to do all the creative stuff that really helps the kids direct the learning and be experimental. And, you know, they were building robotics in the fourth grade because they wanted to. And, you know, she opened that up for them. And years Past, and then she realized, you know, I can't do this anymore. It's against the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just sad to see um, the degra degradation. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah I, I have, you know, my own feelings about the whole system for teachers as well. It's like the article I posted, if you can get on my Facebook page, the one that says, I don't want to be a teacher anymore, written by a teacher. Yes. Yes. I, I read it. It's very good. You're right. I speak to that, and I wrote saying it's not the teacher's fault. Yeah, hold on one sec. Hold on. 
Um, you're, you're bringing up some awesome points here and they keep on slipping by it. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And we need to be addressing all these things that you're pointing out here. Um, going way back about 10 minutes ago, Tracy mentioned about um, this, this system where we have, uh, it would be better without a system. And hey, guess what? This is why we have an elected school board. Each township elects its own schooling system. Hey, how perfect is that? It's totally regional. There is no system other than what the people themselves determine. This is what we have in the law right now. It's all about local communities, not central control government. And if we understand the law itself and the principles behind it, wow, it's already solved. The revolution's already happened and the hard part is done. When we follow our law, we the people have no law. But we have to be literate enough to read the law. Like uh, Rebecca's mom, when she and I were on the city council, okay, there's Kathy Harrison and, Ray, uh, and Patrick Brammer, four members there, a majority on council. Okay, I'm voting present for 13 months because the law requires me to vote present when the mayor is conducting an illegal meeting. Now, Ray Hahn, Patrick Brammer, and Kathy Harrison, after the meetings, would say to me, Eric, I see what you're doing by voting present because yes or no are both illegal. At the next meeting, I'm going to have to vote present too because it's the right thing to do. And Ray Hahn said that five times, Kathy Harrison more times than I can count, and Patrick Brammer three times. These are other aldermen there at the table, a majority on the council. So we would have taken it back right then and there. Okay. Well, at the next meeting, tying in again with another point y'all just made, the stress. When it's just like the threatening the teachers. Oh, well, you're going to lose your job. Stress, stress, stress. Do what you're told. Do what you're told. Follow along. Because you go. what happened is at the next meeting, when a stress level goes way up in a, an important public business meeting like the city hall, wow, suddenly, you know, it's fight or flight. That's what's going on. It's a psychological warfare that they fall into and their dog training and the corporate school system kicks in. And no longer are they personally empowered from the inside out, but now they're determined from the outside in, completely upside down. And you see, that's the model they're using. As long as we're educated from the top side down, we will follow leadership and disregard of conscience and love and even our own thinking ability, and we will follow who appears to be leadership. And that's what happened with these other members. After the meetings, they would vote they would come to me and say, oh, I'm going to have to do this next meeting. I said, well, we can't discuss how we're going to vote without a reporter present, but please do what you feel is best. Okay, follow your conscience. Well, at the next meeting, when the stress goes up, then they do as they're told instead of being the personally empowered thing. And that, this is what I'm getting at here. This is the dog training that happens with the corporate school system. Otherwise, we would be empowered. Like the teachers there, the teachers worried about losing their job. How can they teach under a system like that? They can't. Of course they can't, so, but that's, that's the idea. What I'm suggesting here is we have a solution and we don't have to follow their regulation. We have a republic, and as I said, that means we are the authority, not they. But if we acquiesce to their bogus regulation, we in this moment are allowing the dictatorship and the overthrow of our government and the miseducation of our citizens, our children, okay? We have all the power and we don't need to ask anybody else's permission. We have that authority because we still have this flag and this means a republic, that means we are empowered. So we occupy those offices and in the maximum of war, whomever leaves the field of battle first loses by default. Very important there, understand that. So if we leave our seats vacant in citizen government, guess what happens? The corporation walks right in, the good old boy system walks right in, they just follow right along, okay? That's because we Can I jump in? make it. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Tracy. Thank you. I'm sorry. I totally appreciate everything you're saying. I, I, I agree with you to a certain extent, but my issue personally is if we go to community, which I fully embrace being a part of the community and interactive in the community, but when it comes to education, well, I live in a very um, religious area, mm -hmm. and for all of us to come together on a curriculum at all I can't see myself fitting into that and, and really gaining what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And basically that's why I went off on my own and, and did my own learning. Thank goodness for the internet because that's how I did it, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's a possibility. Um, for independent study, I think there does need to be some guidance. I'm not really sure how that would work, but it's particularly for where I am locally, 
yeah, I don't really fit in with the majority of the people. And I feel like, you know, even with the community, and they're lovely people, but I just don't think I would get what I'm looking for in a cohesive fashion. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a yeah, really very, good point. Com- very common point being brought up is, and that's how they scared us into accepting central control in the first place is that, well, look at what those people do and look what those people do. And oh my gosh, they'll have racism. They'll have all this going on. And it's like, wait a minute here. If we're moving, we're losing the baby with the bathwater because whenever we allow a central control so that we can control all of it, guess what? Somebody else takes over. And that's the thing. And then we end up with this no child left on retarded. And you know, it's subtle. It's like cooking the frog in the pot. They just bring the temperature up slowly and you never recognize you're getting cooked. And over generations, this is done. And so that's why now it's finally the end of the game and things are so horrible and so awful. It, like you brought up before earlier, another excellent point that was mentioned, creating conflict in the family. You can't follow these regulations and force your child to do this. I mean, and it separates the parents from the child, which is precisely why they're doing this. It's all about divide and conquer. And the more divided and conquer we are, the more we will be led to fight ourselves. You know, we're one nation indivisible. But as long as we're... We need to pause and we need to switch the language from using this word retarded. We just have to. It's not okay. Well, okay. If you, however you wish, that's all well, fine, good. From with it because we are, you know, I get that, but we need to switch that language because that language was used as a derogatory pushing down of people with special needs a oh, long time well, ago. It, I, so, I see what you're saying there. I'm just refer. I think that was appropriate with what the government. It might be appropriate, Eric, but we're but we're but if people have a trigger around that word oh, or yes. something for yeah. that word, it'll lose them as viewers. And I want to make sure that we keep our viewers intact sure. and hearing what's actually being said and not being triggered. So oh, we, yes. I just want to shift that language. Uh, but I totally get it. We just need to shift the language. Okay, I'll I'll do that. Um, Becca, you brought up a very important point. Also, that's part of the psychological warfare. Also that they will use, uh, they will demonize certain words so as to make it incapable or even more difficult for us to get to the bottom of this and understand. For example, keywords are like Republican and Democratic, liberal, conservative, left and right. Oh, guess what? The left and the right, if we follow the left wing and the right wing, they both connect to the same establishment buzzard. And that's really part of the divide and conquer thing. Once we recognize we're one nation indivisible under one law, one body, of course we don't fight ourselves. We recognize then we are together as the people and there is the corporation that has taken over that we've allowed. Well, we just follow the law and out they go. I mean, when Blue, we're- I, Blue, I see you cogitating over there. I see your brain going, give us some feedback. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Um, what I'm thinking here, and I think Tracy brought it to my attention. First of all, Rebecca, Eric and myself are part of the Eureka Springs, Arkansas community. And I think there's a a significant uh, strength here in our um, connectedness, okay? And when Tracy spoke up, it's like, oh yeah, uh, you know, I had to stop and get her perspective of, yeah, she, she's, kind of saying there's a community she doesn't necessarily identify with where we have, I think we've taken it for granted in some ways. Eureka Springs is what, 99% um, artists and healers. All right. So we have a very connected community and uh, we probably have a lot of potential here to in fact the best. Uh, insert our lawful selves in our education. So I wanted to just kind of note that for a moment. All right. And when Tracy said that, all of a sudden I got this sense of very conservative, maybe maybe even religiously minded people in her community. So she's really up against, uh, you know, uh, she's not starting from the same place that we are. I'd like to speak to that at at some point soon. Okay. Okay. Can go on if you need to. All right. So I think, you know, when I sit here and listen to these conversations, because I value so much this knowledge and understanding. Um, I'm way back in what I shared earlier. It's like, well, wait a minute. What if, all right, and I'm jumping back to homeschooling now, but what if we really wrote a curriculum 
that was available on the internet that's really training our kids, you know, and maybe the older ones, really training them to identify the flaws in their classroom environment as a, as a political, as a citizen. And we started to put that in our homeschooling, all right, for those that are still going to school and then the other part of it you're doing at home. You know, that's where my wheels went. I went, you know, our kids are brilliant. What would the agenda and curriculum look like? I mean, you know, I mean, even if we take a five-year-old, five-year-old knows when an unjust thing is happening, all right? Uh, they just can't communicate it, you know, like an adult. But they, when they say no, most of the time, there is some kind of really good logic behind that no. So I'm back there. I'm, I'm churning with, geez, what would I be teaching my kid right now? How to be, you know, I'm thinking about how I was in school. You know, I was always on the borderline of getting thrown out. But I was, I was smart enough, you know, I had enough, um, I don't know, teenage chutzpah, you know, to, to really confront. Now, it doesn't mean I wasn't frustrated, you know, and, uh, and I didn't know how far my power could go other than I was always pushing that place of, I'm equal to you, dear instructor. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, that's so, what I'm kind of moving around with. So here, here we are, and here I am. Mm -hmm. And Blue, you know that I am, I am the vessel for mass consciousness on the show. <laughs> right? That's all, you know, not always, but 99% of the time, I am that vehicle for mass consciousness. Yeah. And whatever starts happening to me becomes bigger than me, and it's typically about if the whole entire world was watching this show, mm -hmm. what would they be feeling and experiencing? Mm -hmm. Or what are they feeling and experiencing? And each one of you is exceptional and so am I. We've always thought outside the box. But what, what I'm feeling right now, based on our conversations thus far, and nobody's going to like to hear this, including myself, is that we're all completely full of shit. <laughs> and I'm completely annoyed and frustrated because we're speaking this really big picture stuff when why hasn't it happened yet and I'm gonna challenge you here because Tracy you said my community is this my community is very you know uh, religious I don't know if we could come to a place of curriculum together blue saying I want to create this curriculum Eric saying let's you know let's just walk in and take it over and I'm, and I'm saying well if that's the case how come it hasn't happened yet don't answer yet I'm on a roll nope the <laughs> reason yeah and here's the deal people our teachers I am on the front lines with these teachers they are medicated they are exhausted they are trapped I don't think because it hasn't happened yet that we've just walked in and taken over I don't think it's gonna happen and the other aspect is yes Eureka Springs is an incredibly beautiful community but I can tell you one thing statistically, and that is out of the town is 2,500 people, 24,099 of them are artists. One artist, one, has made it her work to go into schools and use her artist, artistness, her creativity to get in there and work with the kids on a regular basis. I get approached all the time by people in Eureka, not all the time, several times, where people have said to me, hey, I think it's really, really important that our students get educated and um, in a proper way and creatively. I want to be a part of that. I know that you do this. What can I do? And I said, well, you can go talk to the, you can create a body of work, really simple, that's like a day or two. You can bring it to the school. You can get a really easy grant. You can do this. You can, I bring them through the really most simple version of this process when you're just starting out. And most people's responses to me is, well, that feels like a lot of work. I just want to go in there. I'm like, well, then just go in there, but do something. But it's the idea of having to integrate and do the work that has created apathy. And I love Eureka, and we're very active in some ways, but I got to tell you that we fall prey to the same thing that many other communities fall prey to, is that nobody is in the classrooms. Where are, where are the artists? Where are they going in? Yes, you. I, but I said, you are an exception. No, How do we get a, people I mean, a point to our exceptions to step in and do this also? Like I think to change the curriculum 
and and do this together. We have to start making we have to start making people feel safe enough to bring their creativity into the classrooms we already have. Start and as a as an educator, you know, I have so many parents say to me, "Are you thinking of homeschooling your daughter?" And I say, "Yes, do it with me." And they go, well, I'm not a teacher. I'm not an educator. I can't do that. And it's also this mindset. So how do we create a level of nurturing and safety so that we can start getting these creative people into the classrooms? Okay. Start supporting teachers to reignite that place in themselves. Right. Start creating enough safety in our children, not to necessarily be challenging, but to work with our teachers to, to discover this stuff together again, because I don't see it happening. Okay. I see people going and opening private schools. Okay, okay. so address. I don't okay. necessarily agree with everything I'm saying, <laughs> but I do know that I have felt this from the mass consciousness. Okay. So I'm not not all my shit. It's just what I was feeling. So all go right, ahead. let's address those things one after another. Okay, uh, why hasn't it happened? Uh, yeah. So let okay. me help us out here, Eric. <laughs> Whatever point you bring up, let's let Tracy and Blue speak to it before you go on to the next point so that we just get, we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. So what's okay. the point? I, I want to hear this. Why hasn't it happened? Okay. The reason why we haven't seen it happening, and I'm speaking as an engineer and a physicist, okay, we're dealing with a nonlinear universe here. Anything could happen at any moment. Okay. It doesn't have to make a dang bit of sense. And if it does make sense, we're probably limiting ourselves tremendously to a third dimensional space time. Okay. So that being said... All right, the reason why we haven't seen the solutions that we've already created, because problem and solution manifest simultaneously as the one thing, okay? So where's the solutions? Why hasn't it happened? It's because our frequency is at the frequency of problem, and that is our dog training. And we have to wake up and pay attention to our feelings and recognize, hey, this feels like a crock of shit. Guess what? It's probably a crock of shit. So how do we get from shit into this high space? Well, recognize the shit is God also, okay? Substance, we're dealing here with love and light. If it's all love and light, no darkness exists. But we have to be at that frequency of love and light, and then it comes through us because we are that conduit for that light. We bring the light to humanity when our leaves are in the darkness on the tree of humanity. The leaf in the light is feeding the leaf in the darkness, okay? The key is that the one in darkness has to relax, and it happens through the greater unseen supporting structure, and the light comes through the being of each individual leaf on the tree of humanity, and we bring the light to humanity through our being. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so that yeah, is the reason yeah. why you haven't seen it yet, okay. because you guys have to be up in frequency to the point where you do see what we We have to be at that level, and we bring it to humanity through us. Okay. Um, now, I'll let somebody else speak. I, I, there's a couple of other points you brought okay. up, but I think we'll stick with that. <clears throat> well, I just, I mean, I think the way you articulated that was absolutely awesome, because that's, you know, that's the only place I can go. You know, when you ask, like, why hasn't it happened? It's like, um, it always has to spiral back to our quantum field, our inner selves, um, our consciousness, okay? I really, I always come back to consciousness. If we're holding the consciousness that the solutions aren't there, then that, in fact, is what we're Closes producing. the door. It, it, uh, right. And it's like, how do we approach this? I mean... You know, is it us continuing to talk about what's working, um, you know, acknowledging, uh, you know, the scenario of even just like what you're saying, go into the school board and just, you know, like where we, we present the scenarios. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go into the school boards. Let's talk as if that's not a problem. Right. So it's our purpose. It's like, it's, and, and I, th I, you know, I think sometimes it does, it gets that simple. It, it looks it, like Tracy's lit up here. Are you, Tracy, you wanting to say something? You still on there with us? Oh, I'm still here. I, I once wanted to say what a metaphysical mouthful that was, and I'm so impressed. <laughs> I loved every minute of that. Yeah. And um, I, we are the change. We are the ones. I totally am with you on that. And mm -hmm. it is up to us as individuals to come together and, and create the system we want. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, that's all I want to say. <laughs> what, if, what if we what if we just like let's do something creative with our conversation in this moment? Like, what if we approach this whole topic from a place of empowerment? 
And we, and what we're saying now is, well, wow, our uh, republic, democratic uh, constitutional rights are absolutely being acknowledged right now, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's take that into the fiber of our being. Let's call in the quantum field. Let's call in the power of uh, consciousness. So right now we're sitting on a panel and we're going, okay, we, um, we love endorsing that creativity in our children and we really want them to be very empowered. Um, they can know history, but it's gonna be from our perspective. And right now what we wanna do is we wanna just bring them into being empowered individuals. Um, uh, I love our board here. We're all the board of uh, education right now. And um, yes, I think there's some construction work that has to be happening on our school building. I think there just wasn't enough spaciousness for my child to be able to dance, you know, 30 and 40 feet across the room. I think the 20 foot diameter is just a little too limiting. And everyone goes, right the fuck on. Let's create a dance studio and, it, and we'll have those box kind of desks that we want to pull in. All right, so where I'm going is, and we've done this before, but you have to know it in your deepest cellular self. There is no problem. Bingo. I love it. And we just talk to each other. We don't go, yeah, but the powers that be. And it's like, no. Tomorrow, we're going to go over to the, uh, you know, the city council and uh, just share our views and let them know that, you know, this is the way uh, it needs to be. And there's no problem. How do we change that consciousness in ourselves? It's like, that's what has to switch. Mm. That's what has to switch. When, when, and we're talking about it like, you know, when all this information about, you know, someone dressed in a blue uniform comes up to you and kind of asserts, you know, they're a bully and they're like, hey, man, we, we don't like what you're doing. Our consciousness is, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm a respected, honored uh, being, and that whole the whole uh, repertoire of I'm sovereign, I walk the land. Um, you're being rather rude, sir. Would you please remove yourself from my environment? What is empowering us to really speak those truths? Okay, so we're just kind of, I'm just saying in this moment, this is all we got. How are we empowered? How are we empowered in this very moment? How can we change our whole conversation well let's do it right now let's we did. let's it's, do it's, it it's done let's do it let's talk knowing in our deepest souls all right our deepest cellular body mm -hmm. our world is exactly the way we would like it to be and that's where i wanted the conversation to shift when i felt that mass consciousness of overwhelm and is that we yeah. really have to create a place for people to become clean and clear and follow their intuition and go, everything's perfect as it is. And I love the point that Eric made when he said, um, you know, it can change in an instant. It can change, you know, the quantum field, we bend time according to our own will and do what we need to do instantaneously. But we need to get people to a place where they can do that. How do we get people there before we talk about, you know, walking in and changing the board of directors and going into a school and being like, here we're, we're knocking down a wall right now we won't even have to yeah. knock the wall we just envision it coming down and poof there's the dance studio. because in the parallel universe that is what our school systems look like but how do we get mm -hmm. people to a place of that well we go back to this idea of self-empowerment through clearing out the old belief system clearing away the baggage becoming discerning understanding that we can live in any dimension we want you know but we have to put practices in place for people to okay so then becca So one of the things that we have to, I think, have to stop doing is assuming <clears throat> that people are ignorant, all right? I'm all for start recognizing we are brilliant, yeah. all right? And there's more of us united on this planet, okay? That's propaganda out there. So I think that's one of the things we have to stop doing. Stop thinking people are asleep. We're not asleep. No, we're all right? not. And, uh, okay, we're not asleep. And I, I think that sharing those kind of messages like when we keep asking like you know what can we do all right i think we underestimate we're just talking about quantum physics it's like we haven't integrated that really deeply in ourselves 
This moment is a ripple of consciousness and we're changing the very fabric of the world in this moment. And we don't, we don't allow ourselves to receive the actual empowerment that's happening right now. Because we see looking at that old paradigm, from that old paradigm, show me results, validate my consciousness. Fuck the old paradigm. And this is what I think we are changing the world. Each and every iota of a molecule is being changed in this very moment. And I think we're just being impatient, all right? Because I think our evolutionary consciousness is this subject has been happening for a long time, only it is way more evolved in this very moment than it was 10 years ago. And I think we need to just go good on you good on you for what you're saying you know like and just keep knowing these are the building blocks it's like you know eric's probably shared this information about you know our our government our constitution more times than he can remember but every time he shares it it's another entheos it's another moment of he's enthused that consciousness and awareness look and i, I just think all I was was the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. I was just being mass consciousness. But I think this is where I wanted to. I love you too. But this is where I wanted to get to. I want someone, I, I was forcing us to get to that pure place of every single one of us has everything we need in us instantaneously at this moment. And, and you know, here's the deal. My daughter is suffering. I am suffering. You, a few of you would understand, Tracy included in this statement, what, how horribly painful, how many sleepless nights, how many tears I've shed, how many tears she has shed, how much coddling and um, nurturing I've done to her around the school stuff. It is horribly painful. And here's the bottom line. It's because I'm not in alignment and neither is she. And we know better. We know better. And we're not in alignment. And when you're not in alignment with the divine purpose, whether it's education, whether it's your job, whether it's your partnership, you live in pain till it becomes so intolerant that you go, I'm finally going to act on what I've always known. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not in alignment, then you're in pain. That's the wake up call. So all of us as a nation, as a world are in pain around our education system and people are finally going, I'm listening to what it is that I've known all along. And now I have to do something about it. We have it in us. Right. All of that knowledge is within us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's important right now at this point to just looking at the physiology of the body as a model. Mm -hmm. If we shrink ourselves down to the, like the skin cell right here, if, mm -hmm. if we all suddenly, okay, here we are, skin cells hanging out and you're a skin cell and you're a skin cell and you're a skin cell. We're all of these skin cells and there's a bloodstream going here and we take from the bloodstream what we need, we let go what we don't need. It's total harmony. We don't go to war against each other. It's at this level of understanding, that's, that's our, our whole world. Now, if somebody suddenly popped up and said, oh, you know, inside you got this DNA and it has a plan for your whole cell. And we're like, well, maybe, I don't know. Do I need to know that? You know, it's a little beyond our comprehension or ability and so on. So it's like, maybe, whatever. Well, they push it further now that you're a little confused and say, well, inside you also have a plan for the other cells. Not only the other cells about you, but then the liver, the heart, the kidney, the brain, everything else in the whole body that's well beyond your comprehension or need to comprehend. You see, it it's, gets way too far out for the individual little cell to get the picture. But what I'm suggesting here, microcosm reflects a macrocosm. Here we are all citizens in the body of our republic, our nation. We are cells in the body of humanity. That means that not only does your woman here have the plan for herself, but she has a plan for the cells, has not only a plan for itself, but all right. humanity. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is what is speaking to us through the frequency of love and light within us. And whenever our local cell is out of alignment, as y'all were mentioning, mm -hmm. well, you'll feel the discord, and that's the pain, okay, that you were mentioning, Becca. And so this ties it all together. And we learn this holistically in our local schooling. And we recognize, oh, well, my feelings tell me my thoughts are out of alignment, even though it appears to be reality. 
it's not really true. I'm falling into a bad dream here. There's another reality existing simultaneously, and I could get there right now because I could change my frequency by my focus of thought or my breathing. I could go into my breathing and totally disengage the thought locomotive, and I could be back in peace instantly because mm -hmm. that's what I am. Mm -hmm. So you drop the thought, and then you phrase your frequency, and then the solution appears. Downloads into the head, shows up in the book. A wonderful person comes and say, hey, Eric, have you heard this yet? And this is how it works. We have to relax into it. Yes. And it's relaxing into it that allows the opening of the energy pathways so we learn from the inside out again as we are as substance. We're not just the wave. We're not just the cell. We're the whole ocean. And we Eric, right there is the beginning of the curriculum that we should be creating for our children. If they knew this, yeah. that's they the curriculum. They, they do know it, and then they're educated into separation. But they were awake to it. You know. Okay, so right there. If Eric is speaking this and he's a parent, there's every possibility and potential that his son is receiving this information. Is, is. If it isn't through his oral presentation, that son's already got this is in, in his DNA. Cellularly. Right? It's being so we just shared it. Now it's going through you. It's going to go through your daughters, right? Your children. It's done. And the thing that, you know, that's, that's going through me so strongly is if we know the power of our words and intention, like I'm sitting here and going, you know, rather than going, oh, the world's gone to shit. All right. We have a lot of negativity out there. And even those of us who believe in a better future are still pretty negative. What if it wasn't like reclaiming like 100 years ago? We, the people, are doing fucking a all right. Amen. We, the people, we, the republic, the democracy of this country is on top of it. Amen. What if we just started putting those messages out yes. of where our origins really came from? Like, who cares? Who cares what anyone else thinks is going down in a bad way? Uh doing this now. She's doing this now. I, I, I'm doing this now because the molecules are responding to my enthusing through movement and sound. Oh my God. Eric ran away. I did it. I blew him out of his chair. He's now you have to <laughs> So now we're going, now we're dancing in the sphere. I just totally love and identify with. I just feel like this is it right here. Of course, you know, and, and yeah, and our kids are learning this. Is this awesome? This is. Our and, kids and, are and learning and this right now. As we are loving, remember, like the tuning forks, back to physics again. Here we are. This is, all right, tuning fork and C here and the one on the other side of the room over there. Well, I strike this one and that one vibrates yeah. through sympathetic resonance. Right. And as we are cells in the body of humanity, as we vibrate with this frequency, all of humanity is being awakened through this subtlety from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And as they are more sensitive, they are becoming more subtly aware of all of this. And this is, mm -hmm. as we live, and we're the leaf in the light right now, and we feed the leaves in the shadow, we don't have to concern ourselves as a leaf in the light to get it to the ones in the shadow, that doesn't, that happens by the unseen supporting structure that exists beyond our comprehension. Okay. Recognize that that's what's happening. And you can just study the trees and they'll teach you all about this stuff. I studied the trees after studying engineering. It's like, well, let's take all this engineering knowledge, which was based in nature and study nature instead of the mad mind of humanity, which is about separation and money and all these distractions. That's insanity. So I studied nature and that showed me all these patterns and how to heal myself. I got rid of my ulcers. I got rid of all my problems. I healed the body. I ended up in Eureka Springs as a part of my healing adventure, you know, and then after you bring your resonance up as the instrument of your soul, like a Stradivarius violin and the Chinese violin made for economy for a beginner, well, you could have the best violinist play this Stradivarius and it's going to have this wonderful, beautiful sound manifest through this, this artist and the instrument. Well, if the same artist plays the Chinese inexpensive box, well, even though the master plays the instrument, it won't have the sweet resonance and sound and tone of that beautiful instrument <laughs> otherwise, okay? This is important to know. This is the reason why we have to have organic food, that can vegetarian, whatever is necessary, drink the good mineral water out of the ground, not out of the plastic bucket, whatever, corporately controlled. 
as you remove the toxins from the body, you become a better instrument for your God self, your higher self as that artist that plays this instrument. Okay, and you'll be able to better reproduce those sweet sounds of thought and manifestation into the physical world. So this is really about learning more about your own health, what your body needs, and then making those adjustments and changes in whatever way, shape, or form. And the rest of the universe will aid you in all of this. Yeah, well, right on the heels of that is with our full out intention, we are cleared, we are purified, we raise our, fre our frequency, mm -hmm. our vibration. You know, I've been, I've been calling it rich presence. You know, it's like, I intend rich presence in my being and, and wherever I might be in the environment, mm -hmm. right? Awesome. And, awesome mantra. You know, and that comes back to like, you know, you can blow on your food, you can do anything. Uh, it, it's shoo, consciousness again, consciousness, consciousness again, consciousness. You open the door. Consciousness again, consciousness. <laughs> Beck, where is Tracy and Becca? I wanted to check in with Tracy in a moment, but I just wanted to say that was sort of my platform about getting clean and getting clear so that we can we can actually be that vessel, that conduit for, mm -hmm. and it can happen instantaneously too, but what I'm saying is getting us to a place where we are able to handle in terms of being an energetic vessel, you mm -hmm. know, a, an mm -hmm. electrical system to handle all of the stuff that needs to move through us. Mm -hmm. um, and Back. some of it by setting intention and eating crap food, whatever it takes. But because some people are where they are. But Tracy, I wanted to check in with you. How you doing, girl? Any thoughts? I'm so loving this conversation. One, I think it's monumentally important. And I'm one who believes that we create our reality. And these conversations and the focus that we're putting on these ideas can only expand. And, you know... It's all about focus, and we have the power to focus on whatever we choose. And if we're feeling something that needs to happen, that's, that's guidance. You know, we're feeling that a change needs to occur. And, you know, I see us as all powerful, and it's just a matter of focus. And, well, that's pretty much how I feel about it and sort of sums it up. I think I think we are fully capable of taking on any challenge. And the fact that our minds are sort of gravitating into a direction tells me that, you know, it's totally done. We just need to follow, you know, the path to get there. Mm -hmm. Right on. I, I want to just take a moment to acknowledge Jerry. Um, he's been putting things in the chat room, and I think I've just got um, – I'm being a little more distracted than I usually am. <laughs> and But Jerry's got uh, a comment here. Education is controlled by the federal dollars tied to the federal standards. If the localities don't follow the guidelines, their state won't give them money because the feds won't give the states their money. Okay, well, in this moment, I pronounce we are so on top of it. We have access to all the money that's coming through. The taxes are back in the people's hands and uh, we've got an awesome educational board in every local community and our uh, city councils represent us, period. There's a paradise is restored in each moment's decision not to let your sight interfere with your vision. It is done. It is, it is. And as you resonate with that, then as holding that frequency long enough, the quantum energy is raised sufficiently, then it manifests into the physical plane. Then you get to see it. But you have to hold that frequency long enough for that manifestation and download, and that's how we create it. You really are becoming better creators and all of this stuff. And that's why it's, you know, once we could start addressing these issues from this level of cause, the physical world is the... Um, it's the manifestation. Residue, it's residue of thought, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. the symptom or the symptom. It's like looking at the back of the boat. You know, if we keep on looking at the back of the boat, all we'll see is the wake of what we've created. If we really want to recreate what we want, we have to turn around 180 degrees and look at the front of the boat into the cause, which is thought, and which manifests the world. You have to be at the frequency of paradise, peace, love, which is, of course, all that we are. Mm -hmm. And you just drop all the other negativity. And you, you learn that through meditation. You know, once you learn to practice your playing your own instrument, then you get to hear better music and sweetness. Mm -hmm. 
So as the vessel for mass consciousness, uh, what I'm experiencing now is something needed a shift, and I was feeling this, Wah! and now I'm feeling really calm. There's a lot more spaciousness in me. The mass consciousness is actually really quiet. You know, the, zo <laughs> the zombies aren't like, rah, 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 rah. they're just like, okay, we've been fed. We're quiet now. We're ready to listen. We're in this with you. We understand the language you're speaking now. And so what yeah. that's telling me is if I'm calm in my center and it's quiet, then what I, what the picture I'm getting is that everyone's sort of sitting cross-legged on the planet, like kids in a classroom, looking up at their, looking up and just smiling and being like, that feels right. So I'm, I'm really glad that the conversation shifted to the more pure form of what we're getting at. And then I think if we set this tone quantumly and people can recognize that which we speak to now, then we can get into those conversations later about what all that other heady stuff means. Um, because right now the, the world is quiet. I'm feeling the world is quieted down right now in the midst yeah. of us presenting this new stuff. Yeah, Rebecca, I'm totally there with you. The vibration has gotten, uh, it just smoothed out. It feels real fluffy and enjoyable, and I feel like uh, all of us are uh, connected. And, and I think what's helping me is kind of what I shared. I want to elaborate some more on. I think what's helping me is knowing that, you know, it's another moment, and I like the sensation of frequency we've all created. And a reminder once again that, you know, every time we find this place with ourselves and our other relations, uh, we're contributing, okay? And I think it's just that linearity is the part that's still making us think, we're not, you know, making us think we don't, we're not making headway or that we're dividing. And it's like, it's just not true. For us to be able to come into our heart space like this right now and, and feel this vibration no matter where any of us are on the planet right now, this is, this is our reflection. This is the knowing that we are changing the world. We've got a handle on this. And um, I think as more and more of us realize what we give our attention to is creating the reality, more and more of us, I think, are getting discerning and making a difference. And, and as a result, I think another thing is we can't look outside <clears throat> as the barometer of determining whether we have um, a, a validation. We've got to go back in here. And um, out there, is, it's, it's changing. We just don't see it yet, you know. Our environments are changing. Our frequency is changing. We're creating a new world. And if we can step out of that linearity and just, you know, and that's what brings us okay. always back to be grateful and know we're living our truths. Mm -hmm. we're, we're living our truths. And we are making a difference. We really are. The, the greatest aspect of us, we're like the tip of the iceberg here in the physical form. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the greater part of us is already aware of all this. Okay. Right. The only reason why, I mean, even the, our, the energy of our thinking that is, in a pattern of imagining separation is actually all part of the one thing anyway. Okay. It's our miscreation of thought, which brings the discord in the body. Why you don't feel good about something. That's your soul letting you know, Hey, you're out of tune here, tune up, mm -hmm. you know? And when you do come into tuning with that, well, then you see it manifest in the world as you were mentioning it at first, you don't see it at first. Well, you will have your affirmation in the feeling itself mm -hmm. that you are in the right thought. And as you maintain that energy long enough, like the quantum field, then you will see a download into the physical plane, but not before. You have to hold on to this and know this, and this is how, once we're trained into doing this, which is actually thousands of years old, well, yeah. this is how we manifest the world, right. okay? But right. we have to be at peace first to see the peaceful world manifest. Yeah. If we are watching the television, or you know, off in our corporately dog trained head, well, well, well sorry. oh my God, oh! Revolted. You know, we should demonstrate. Well, yeah, okay. Occupy the, school, you know, the sidewalk. What are your, does that do you? It's occupy the school board. That's what we'll get. We change. And the next generation won't be as retarded as the current. And the current generation is perfect for them anyway because they'll just follow the new leaders. How simple is that? You don't have to wake up anybody. 
And there's an the affirmation right there. See the laughter? That's it. That's the that's the soul expressing through the physical vehicle, the instrument. Uh, uh, yeah. When you're totally. out of your mind, in case of stress, there's what to do. Get out of your mind and you'll have a clear view. And when you do, you come to find the loving world you've left behind. Okay. Nice. Nice. I, I'm seeing um, Zeus. Go ahead, Tracy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, but I did want to say something about duality since you sort of brought that up and my perspective of it. And I think people look at duality and, and things in the extreme of this is good, this is bad, they put labels on it to the extreme. And I, it seems to me that a lot of people don't see the array in between mm -hmm. of options. The whole thing is our option. Mm -hmm. And we get to choose anything that we want to focus on. And I just don't want the options limited for anyone. And, you know, I just wanted to make that comment about duality because I hear it talked about a lot and it's really just focusing on the ends of the spectrum and missing the colors in between. Oh, yeah. sweet. Well said. Yeah. And you know what, Tracy, I'm glad you brought that up because it helped me remember a thought I had lost before, but it, it spirals us back to diversity. I, it, it's like we all say, yes, we embrace diversity, but I, I think we're really very young at uh, understanding how to embrace one another in a diverse way. And it's, it kind of addresses like what you're saying, like in duality, there's a full out range. It's not just, you know, left and right to the max. There's a full out range of duality. There's a full out range of diversity. And I think we need to give each other a lot more spaciousness. It's like what we're saying we want to do for our children. Well, we need to do that as adults. We need to give everyone a lot more spaciousness to say it like we say it, express it like we express it, be filled with contradictions. We change constantly. Forgiveness. That's one of my biggest things. It's like we got to be really forgiving of each other. You know, somebody says it and you perceive it. Well, that's, that's your world. Your, that's your perception. Now, there was something uh, you mentioned, Lou, about uh, Jerry's comment about bringing up those uh, points there. Now, those are classic. Most everybody will bring up those very points. And I, I thought that was important that he brought those up. Mm -hmm. um, the, the common argument is, well, we'll lose our funding if we, aren't, don't, if we don't do what we're told. Okay, well, this is why I'm saying, like you had pointed out, Eureka Springs, well, I'd like to see here that Eureka Springs is where the veil is thinnest, you know, okay? <laughs> we, we have the highest income per student ratio in the whole state of Arkansas, okay? So we don't get any extra federal funding at all. In fact, they've been trying to take $900,000 of our collections because we have extra, according to them. So, hey, uh, we don't need their stinking funding. And besides that, that's just a corporate baited fish hook that we absolutely do not bite, okay? And when the other, the other towns and townships uh, school boards in the state of Arkansas see what we're doing as an example, the people will demand this as they recognize, oh my gosh, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Hey, guess what? It's already the law. We already had a revolution. We don't have to have another one. It's already Eric, what, thing? what is it that Eureka is doing by example? Well, when I'm using this vision, okay, we um, simply take Take perfection. That's actually one day I walked out to the woods and I said, okay, well, show me how this world is perfect. Okay. I'm for my little physical vehicle. I'm in the dark here. So help me out here. And the answer that came back was the 99% follow 1%. And I'm like, uh, okay, how is that perfect? Well, look at Eureka Springs. The last census was 2000 something people, uh, 70. So what's 1% of 2000, 20 people. All right. Well, I proved when I was on city council, verified by the city attorney, when uh, Joyce Elder tried to have me censured, impeached, removed, however we can get rid of him. As a city attorney, how do we get rid of Eric? She, the city attorney said, you can't do that. He's following the law. <laughs> okay. Well, I was calling for his removal and everyone else's removal as well. And I was setting it up systematically in the law as required by the law. Okay. Well, he didn't elaborate any further on that because, but the fact is it's all stacked in our favor. But if we don't know the law and we can't read or defer to somebody else to read for us, never mind our own literacy, well, we're overthrown. 
My original question was, what are we doing in Eureka by example that other people want to follow in our educational model? Okay, what we do here then, thank you for bringing me back to the track. Yeah. Okay. Um, using the 1% rule, our 20 people, four people take over City Hall, school board, six people is a majority on the school board, okay? Now, we just don't go in and take over, as what has been mentioned here already. Uh, it's not about us taking over. It's about we, the people, reestablishing and asserting our citizen government. So what we will do on the school board now, now that we have enough conscious individuals on the school board, really easy to do because we're within 1% here. 1%, are, we're assuming 1% consciousness in Eureka Springs, the 1% literacy of those people that are actually literate, conscious, and wishing to serve humanity. Well, we simply occupy the school board. They're unopposed anyway. I'll just walk in there. All right. Well, so now we're going to establish our committee on the school board. We're going to establish a committee that meets bi-monthly, and we are going to uh, have public meetings. Okay. Um, the next two meetings or three meetings, however, we're going to discuss a Montessori school and what the principles are in a Montessori school and how that benefits the child. The child is the leader. and like, like uh, also a Rudolf Steiner school and Waldorf schooling, same, same kind of model. Well, the, the child is the new uh, uneducated. It comes forth naturally from the spiritual world. We follow the children's cues as what they need for their development. Oh, it's brilliant. Okay, you have this natural unfolding free of stress. It's about cooperation. Like our original school system that we had in the United States, which was basically the model they're using for Waldorf Montessori schooling, we already had that for 100 years. I'd mentioned that earlier. It's where holistically we're all together. Music is taught with art and mathematics and science and languages. Older kids help the younger kids. So we build communication skills. We learn to respect one another. In our divided and conquered modern school, Prussian school, it's all about divide and conquer. Separate all the ages. Separate all the subjects. Teach everything in confusion and dump, dump it on them. So all they can do is just hope to follow leadership. And if it makes any sense, it doesn't matter. Okay? Right. So yes, what I'm not catching here is what is Eureka Springs actually doing that anybody wants to follow? Well, but we this, have to wrap it up, so make it really okay, short. I'll, I'll wrap, wrap it up. Then. Okay, in these committee meetings at the school board level, then we're having one-to-one -one meetings with the public, well published in all the newspapers and everything. This is what's going on, reporters and so on. We're discussing what these models are and how we could have the best school system in the whole world, in the whole country for free because we have the highest income per student ratio in the whole state. This is the easy model for us to demonstrate here. And when the other states and other townships see this, it's like, wow, look what they're doing. I've had many families tell me they would move to Eureka Springs if we actually did this because it would be so outstanding. We would have the best of homeschooling. We would best of Montessori, best of Waldorf. We determine what's the curriculum. And if we do it on a this, this is a conversation for another show because I did three years worth of work in our elementary school. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that unless you're actually in there trying hands-on, doing the work every week. Yeah, we're gonna get the best of the best. Trying to change the paradigm. There's there's definitely things about it that are challenging. We have a long way to go with that. But the beginning of that model is having public community meetings that Bingo. change. Bingo. Bingo. You got it. Kind of like uh, sequestered, being run by just the government. That's a first step in that direction. You got it. That's it. That's what I needed to share with you. We could take it step by step. <clears throat> I'm an Aquarian, so and I'm also in engineering, so I, I have all of it just all together accessed. It's what we need to do right here is step by step at the physical level here, and that, that is a perfect first step. At the committee meeting, from an empowered school board informing the people and having one-on-one -on -one citizens discussion. This is what we can do. We're giving you the options. Now we're going to put it to the vote of the people. Exactly. And I think that's a place to summarize kind of this we whole time. Yeah. Okay. We, yes. We vote in a Montessori school and get rid we of the child. So, so I think on that note, if anybody could take anything away from the show, it would be to start with that step one about getting disclosure you know making the veils thinner and getting people involved in ways where it we reach that community and we have those conversations so mm -hmm. um we're about five <laughs> ending and i would love for uh, lou and tracy to just have a comment or two about what they've gotten from the show as well as eric 
and I will close out the show for everybody. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Becca. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to acknowledge, I mean, yes, we have a whole new topic of conversation here. I'd love to go down that path as well. Um, I just really appreciate all the aspects uh, that we've covered here today. And I'm so grateful to Tracy and to Eric for participating. And of course, Rebecca, I always love doing this with you. Does so. Jerry have any other comments on there, Blue? Because it'd be nice to hear them really quickly if he has any. Mm, let me see. And yes, I love you too. <laughs> go, Tracy, go ahead. I'm checking to see if Jerry has anything else up here that... No, it doesn't look like it. That was, that was where Jerry left off. Um, I just want to say that well, one, thank you so much for including me in this, and it's been a pleasure, and I love you all. I think you're awesome, and you inspire me, and I feel like, you know, we're on the verge of a major creation, and, you know, I'm happy to be a part of it, and I thank you all. Uh, thank you, Trace. We love you, too. Yeah, yeah. And thank you to all our viewers, and uh, we encourage people uh, we always have a chat room, and it's always a call-in show. You're always welcome to uh, contribute to the conversation. And thank you, Eric, for being on the show. Your knowledge is just always so vast and expansive and pure, and we love hearing it. Well, thank um, you so much for helping me to uh, be able to express this in a forum that was accessible. And with your uh, y'all's help and reflection here, we could have a vision well beyond our own limitations here as individuals. Like two high eyes in the same head. We now have depth. And I think this is an example of when our viewers might say, what the hell would any of that look like? To have the veils lifted and disclosure and communication. I think this is really what it looks like. It's getting exactly. facing yourself where you go, okay, we're suffering in this conversation. Intuitively, we need to move it here. Where are we at? What's the pure form of this? Let's get to it. Let's, yeah. let's be together. So right thank on. you viewers for being in it with us. Um, I just think it's again that quantum connection of resonating on all these different levels is so important and I also just want to remind all our viewers that we're in a big fun drive right now for CCN yeah. and that you can go to Ethi as an ethical ethymarket.com and make your donation we are um, free speech free news we have no um, advertising we have nobody holding us to any sort of um, stipulation so in order for us to stay free and worthy news to all of you out there, we need to con continue this fun drive. So um, right. anything, a dollar, a million dollars, whatever it takes. And I just want to say thank you for everybody for being with us today. We love you all so much. Blue, I love you too. Blessings. Love you. Thank you, Biggie. Thank you, Mal. Thank you.